<laughs> Welcome back to the episode, everybody. This week, this week's beer of the week is the El Chivy Loco. It's a, it's a nice beer. It's not it's that a, funny. And it's wet. <laughs> eat it with chips and queso. Now let's get into the episode. <laughs> it would be good with chips and queso. <laughs> hey, my beautiful pig milker army. Welcome back to another episode. This week's beer is called El Chivo Loco. This is brought to us by Feed Store Beer Co. of Bloomfield, Indiana. This is an easy drinking Mexican style lager with a wonderful amber, amber color and a subtle but interesting taste profile with a hint of citrus. This has an ABV of 6.3% and the Comcast gives this beer a solid 4 out of 5 rating. As always, please drink responsibly and go and use promo code T20 Cody C U. That's T20 C O D Y C U for 20% off all Redcon 1 products, supplements, merch, protein, whatever you need for your fitness lifestyle. Redcon 1's got your back and use my promo code to get 20% off. Now let's get into the episode. Hello! Welcome back to another episode of the Comcast. As always, I am your fucking host, Ryan. And joining me, as always, is Cody. And back again... Your Sean. co-host, co-host! Your co-host, our, our understudy, our intern. She's our intern. Wow. Hello! Yeah, we're not doing that. Socks and shoes, unprotected sex. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. How's everybody doing? We hope you all have had a great week. We hope you all are having a great summer. Hope you all are staying safe, wearing your sunscreen, and eating your vegetables. And wearing your condoms. And wearing your condoms. And unless eating your birth control. Eating your birth control. You ingest I mean, it. Unless you get the little tea thingy in your hoochie. Or the bar. Or the bar. Tea thingy. Or the patch. Or the shot. What's that, what's that, tea, uh, con- what's that tea thing called? It's an implant. Yeah, but I've been watching IUD? a lot of Teen Mom IUD, and I know that's what yeah, it's called. Yeah. Watching a lot of Teen Mom, which it's weird because an Intral IUD. How does the how is it an IUD? What, what like goes boom in Afghanistan and blows people? It's an IED. IED. C. It's also definitely not a DUI. How uh what? How, <laughs> the IUD? How does? How does that work? How am I supposed to know? I'm not a doctor. I, I thought you, you just, knew how it worked. I think, worked. It just, no. I think a piece I think of plastic stops up your computer hole. Yeah, I was thinking what it like. It, or it like admits hormones or something. So it I thought it. I don't know. I've been watching Teen Mom. How does a piece of pla- this plastic? It's like well, no, it's like air fresher. I don't think it's plastic. I think it's like silicone type thing. Anyway, uh, I think it just like blocks semen from getting into your cervix or whatever the fuck it is. I don't know what it is. I think it makes it weak. It's like, no, not today, motherfuckers. I'm your vagina's goalie. <laughs> Can't get past me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I played in the minors for three seasons. It's like the redneck. <laughs> I played in the minors? <laughs> it's like the redneck. No, uh, like the oh. leagues. But he's like, he's like the redneck uh, karate so man. Like oh, you're, you're right, baby. It's hormones. Ninja yeah. chop. Judy chop. It's the hormones. Hormone reservoir. Yeah. Flexible arms. Mm-hmm. Those weird. go into your fallopian tubes, I do believe. Ugh. Wait, so don't it, doesn't this thing stay in there like for a while? Some years. of them, yeah, some of them can. Hmm. Just depends on what kind you get. So yeah. it is hormones that basically stop. I heard this is like. Wow. One, what the fuck? They're it's chefs. Like, it's nothing, the chefs. The nothing chef and makes the sous me, chef. Nothing makes me hotter than a brick oven. Well, maybe <laughs> they're eating aphrodisiac. They're eating aphrodisiacs. Definitely bowls of spaghetti there. Man, this gluten's really got me hard right now. (laughs) Nothing makes me fucking horny like looking at two chefs in the kitchen. This kitchen is hot. Yeah. I love the way you cut those mushrooms, Stanley. (laughs) Your meatballs are extra round today, dear. I've never seen you grate garlic before, Karen. Let me throw your sausage. (laughs) <laughs> whoa, whoa, okay. Don't you woe me. You crossed the line. Don't you woe me. We're at work. Well, you the, crossed the line. Can I fork your it's noodle? It's kielbasa. <laughs> There's no other way to hold it. <laughs> no, but uh, I think the IUD is, I think it's like, one, it's the most 
like pain in the ass. And two, I think it has like the worst side effects. How do you know? Have you ever had any? I've heard I've heard people talk about it. <laughs> no, I've never people had people talk one. about it and reading about it. It's different than because everyone is different to your unique experience. It really is. Why are we talking about this? It's what? Important. It's not important. Birth Eight. control is important. There's too many fucking babies on this earth. No, there's not. Yes, there is. No, we there's had too COVID. many ugly babies. We are grossly over. overpopulated. No, we're not. COVID fixed We're definitely it. gross. COVID didn't fix anything. It did. We have no, stronger it did babies now. Have you seen the COVID babies that are walking at like four months? Yeah, they're fucking... That's crazy. Up, they're picking up cars and shit. <laughs> oh, so have you not really seen it? Uh, look at this. History's 10 worst forms of birth control. This Lemons. is, new, 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 this is on the there. New York Post. Lemons. This method dates back to the Talmud uh, period... Uh, women who uh, women would soak oh, sponges sh- in lemon juice before inserting them into their vagina as birth uh, control. Nope. Mm. Why is it everybody just? Uh, here's the thing: we're we're using lemons to quit babies from being born, and Girl, we're saying and, and we're saying that a gust of wind blew semen into our vagina in 2021. Dicks are allergic to citrus. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, uh, "Here's another crazy one: Coca Cola. You missed the most important one: uh, mercury. Yeah, sir. <laughs> yeah, we got mercury, uh, which uh, mean, we all know was fucking. If you're ingesting drugs and substances that could kill off the baby, I mean, it's not like it won't not work. Well, don't forget Coca Cola. Everybody knows. Everybody knows the baby's gonna have a sweet tooth for cocaine back in the day. It's harder to get pregnant while you're drinking. It's harder to get pregnant while you're fat. It's harder to get pregnant while you're stressed. It's like <laughs> it's like how's your? It's like you walk to a doctor's office. He's like, how's your sex life going, Janice? It's like. Oh, pretty good. Like, are you taking any birth control? Uh, no. No, I just drink a two liter of Coca-Cola a day and it seems to work pretty good. And I shove a sponge full of fucking lemon juice up there. I call it my magic eraser. I call it my baby a magic eraser. Magic erasers are actually like super fine grits. What the fuck is blacksmith water? The, uh, this is probably water that blacksmiths used after they cooled their tools. Probably this is from ancient Greece. Those ancient Greeks, always mindful of uh, ways, found to, uh, found a way to reuse the water that blacksmiths use a cool material. Holy shit! You get metal you get, like, shavings and shit in your cooter. Yeah, no fucking. It's that's lead poisoning. Uh, what's the definitely uh, can't get pregnant if you got lead poisoning. This other one's animal intestines. As far back as the 1400s, China and Japan. We're using lamb intestines sometimes soaked in milk as primitive condoms that cover just the head of the penis. That might work. Yeah. So it's it looks like, like Toad from Mario. Yeah. Pretty Some much. Of them look like that anyway. Pretty much. I thought they were just shoving intestines up there. So it's like, like, no dicks getting in this. It's shoved full. It's like, hey, Dad, <laughs> hey, Dad I met this girl last night at the, at the social mixer. Murder our lamb for us. I need I need throwing a condom. Throwing a handful of intestines. I need a condom for tonight. <laughs> Could you imagine throwing a wadden intestines at somebody? I'm just like here, take this with you. Yeah, it's like here. Don't forget your fucking lamb, fucking lamb bladder. You gotta put it over your schmeckle. You gotta your schmeckle. You gotta put over your fucking dick. Uh, that's that's crazy. That's insane. Those are all terrible ideas, actually. Well, is have you got? I don't know if you guys have heard. I feel I think we've talked about it, Ryan, but. Uh, like the introduction of birth control in the United States came from like the Ku Klux Klan. Have, mm. have you guys heard of that before? Just because they look Maybe. like fucking little covered dicks with their hoods on. Do what? How is it? How was birth control? I mean, obviously they can't go around raping women and. I mean, get no. Away I think with what them. it was. I think what it was. Was they, like, somebody that was affiliated with the Ku Klux Klan started birth control and condoms. Or it was Planned Parenthood, sorry. Planned Parenthood in bad neighborhoods with a lot of urban culture and African Americans and black people and other other ethnicities besides white. They started them in those neighborhoods so they wouldn't have kids to stop the population of other ethnicities besides white. Well, we'll Mm. see how that went. Yeah. Uh, or, or, sorry, uh, did Planned Parenthood. I also don't mean that in a bad way. Do what? I said I also don't mean that in a bad way. I don't, I didn't take it as a bad way. Well, you never know. What did that say? People leave. Did Planned Parenthood sell organs? <laughs> Orchids? Organs. Organs. Oh. They're not a flower company. 
Uh, action phone. Uh, yes, Planned Parenthood's founder spoke to the KK. What? Oh, just because he was a friend. Just because he was a friend? Um, let's see. If, uh, da, 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 da. A fake image of Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger speaking to the Ku Klux Klan has been circulating online while the image is not real. Uh, what is <laughs> quite imagine, real though? is the fact that Sanger, a prominent and enthused, uh, wait, <laughs> eugenics, spoke to a meeting of the women's branch of the KKK. Mm. There's a women's branch? Well, yeah. yeah, bro. Biker gangs have women's versions. Well, I know, but like bikers can have women bikers. But right. like, you know, there can be women KKK. We're for equality, Cheyenne. Men and women equal now. Well, women shouldn't be engaging in that shit. Women, needs ho- women need hoods on their head, too. No. Back then. Not now, of course. I mean, yes, now. But I mean, I mean, this is a, I don't know, is this the fake picture? Oh, it it says, it says here, the event took place in Silver Lake, New Jersey, and Sanger described it in her autobiography. I accepted an invitation to talk to the women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan. I saw through the door uh, dim figures parading with banners and illuminated crosses. I was escorted to the platform was introduced and began to speak. In the end, through simple illustrations, I believed I had accomplished my purpose. A dozen invitations to speak to similar groups were uh, pro-offered in advance. This is based on Margaret Sanger's autobiography, and it's on page 366. So Sanger called the event one of the weirdest experiences I had I had in lecturing. Uh, so, so this is true. So she did get invited to multiple Ku Klux Klan meetings to talk about uh, birth control and Planned Parenthood. So, and the reason why is because they so wanted Planned Parenthood. That's why she was invited by the Klan? Yeah. So was that her intention or was her intention no, just her intention necessarily was, to spread the word about safe sex? Exactly. Her intention is about her intention was to promote the promotion of eugenics, but basically the Ku Klux Klan was like, oh yeah, this is a good opportunity because this is a good we hate start. everybody but white people. You can fuck so your sister, but use protection. Jesus, <laughs> right? It's one of, but it's no, that's not right. It's not no, right. No, no. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna confidently say that probably people in the KKK most likely have fucked a sibling or done Cousin. something uh-huh. weird. They're the, they're the Ku Klux Klan. Fuck them. Who cares? Who cares about their fucking I feel feelings? Like we don't. They don't. Them. They don't care about anybody else's feelings. Uh, I don't give a shit about theirs. So I'm gonna say it's pretty safe to say that. Who have clan people are incest as fuck. So let's just say that. Um, but no, I think it was just, I think it was just, they're like, hey, this is a good idea. Let's invite her out to several meetings. Like, hey, we brought punch and cookies. <laughs> we got Kool Aid jammers and twist and shouts. Kool Aid jammers. <laughs> What's a twist and shout? Walmart Oreos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's a twist and shout? Walmart Oreos. <laughs> We were Duh. talking about this. Yeah, we were talking Duh about bitch. this. Yeah. <laughs> the the uh like the ones you get from uh like the white and the white and black yeah. cookies you get with the filling inside them. Those are like my those are like my favorite. You that get them from like good. fucking dollar the dollar store and shit. The yellow dollar store. Yep, the yellow dollar store. Dollar General. Not the green dollar store. The yellow dollar. Store. And not the red dollar store. And not the red. Yeah, not the red. I've been watching videos of this guy. He's he's not gotten super fucking famous, but he's been. He only eats stuff from the Dollar Tree, and he's been getting quite a few, like quite quite a lot of notoriety about it. But he goes to the Dollar Tree, and he he goes to the Dollar Tree, and he literally buys all the shit that nobody fucking wants to eat. Like he bought the steak. They have like they have salmon there. They have shrimp and crab and all kinds of weird frozen food that you would not think. And he just eats it. It's fucking weird. But you're supposed to like microwave it first in the bag and then you cook it. It's fucking crazy. Like some of this shit is, is super weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's kind of funny. It's kind of interesting to see like why does the Dollar Tree have fucking salmon? Like I don't I don't know. Poor people want to eat it too. Uh, I, you're better off not eating. You're better off not eating Dollar Tree salmon and, and just not eating Do salmon at all. Do you think it's safer to eat Dollar Tree salmon or safer to eat booty hole? Booty hole. Booty hole. Hmm. Booty hole can't give you fucking salmon vanilla. Are you sure? Can't give you salmon no, vanilla. No, but you get E. coli. Huh? E. coli. 
I don't know. If you're if you're going down on a clean asshole, the 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 threat if is. You're go- go- you gotta find somebody with a clean butthole first. That's true. Not everybody's Q-tipping it, sir. I'm not Q-tipping it. Either. Who the fuck Q-tips? Their butthole. If I'm getting my butthole eaten, I'm gonna Q-tip it. I'm gonna clean Q-tip it. Q-tip what? Like clean the inside of your butthole with a Q-tip. With what? A Q-tip. Aren't you afraid Cobb's gonna get caught up there? No, I sh- it all don't fucking out. squeeze. Loosen her up. Yeah, relax. Have you cleaned your asshole with a Q-tip? Yep. Why? Huh? First of all, I gotta keep my keep my hemorrhoid clean. Yeah. Okay, second of all, we'll leave it unmentioned. Hey, here, here you go, little buddy. Here's a little sponge bath for you. You have to. Been a minute. Your it's been itchy. a minute since you had a little bath. For you know, you. <laughs> you don't want to walk around with it. You sing to it. <laughs> you sing into your hemorrhoids. Just back there, giving a little bath, like you're fucking giving your dog a fucking shower. First little, of all, my dog spritz. doesn't like showers. Do you use a toothbrush or just Q-tip? Or no, what? you just Q-tip it. You don't want to irritate your butthole. Oh, I don't know. I'm not a... Shout out to all the people that clean your asshole with the Q-tip. Shout out to all the people that bleach your assholes. You're fucking crazy, for one. And two, why would you want any kind of chemical on your butt? Why wouldn't you bleach your asshole? I bet you got a nice looking butthole. <clears throat> if you're like a stripper or something, why wouldn't you? Makes sense. Don't nobody want like a brown just or anything on their butt. Just wax it, like Cody, it. it's not hair. It's mainly skin. Spraying a chemical on your asshole is it's just bleach. It's not that big a deal. That's a chemical. Women dye their hair all the time. That's a chemical. So? It's on your asshole. Your hair is basically just dead stuff. You put sunscreen on all the time. You put the hand sanitizer on all the time. It's chemical. Hand sanitizer, petroleum. How safe is it to bleach your butthole? No, no, no. I'm pretty sure it's pretty safe. Like, like, not at home. No, like no, professionally no. get your butthole. Profes- it's just a cream. It's just like a bleach oh, cream. Can you buy that? I'm pretty sure you can. I don't fucking buy some. You don't Will need you to bleach your You don't need to bleach your asshole. How do I know? Uh, so, it is, is anal bleaching worth <laughs> the bootylicious the hype? The bootylicious hype. So, what is anal bleaching is popular cosmetic treatment uh, that lightens the skin around your anus. How does it work? You can either get a cream or chemical peel Ooh. to break down the melanin, uh, is which my, are the... Is what? my butthole pretty white? I don't fucking know. You have your which are the skin pigments? You can also opt for a laser treatment, which can combat hyperpigmentation. No, thank you. I don't want lasers on my butthole. So this, <laughs> the reason for this is because sometimes your butthole needs a glow up. In theory, anal bleaching is no different from any other cosmetic treatment. Like whitening your teeth. Yeah, it makes it makes peeps feel more confident about their appearance. Yeah, People. Yeah. You got a good looking butt. Hole. So it says uh, anal bleaching might feel weird or uncomfortable, but it shouldn't be um, painful. So it might be a little bit Can I DYI it? Fucking answer me this. Uh, can you do it yourself? You can do your own anal bleaching at home. Just make sure you find a safe and reliable product that'll leave you saying, I love my new asshole. I don't know if you could get your asshole bleached if you have a hemorrhoid. So it says this is safe when it's done co- it's, when it's done correctly. Well, you just got to make safe. sure you can't you don't have any broken skin. I prob- probably can't apply it to broken skin. So maybe no. just everywhere except for around my hemorrhoid. Can I bleach your butthole? No. Why? No. Safety first. Safety first is very important. Anal bleaching is perfectly safe when done correctly. Just be sure that you only use top-notch products. Bad bad brands can lead to infection, skin damage, and permanent skin discoloration. Oh, oh no! My asshole's permanently brown now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. This Thanks ble- a lot. This bleach turned my asshole purple. <laughs> That's like when you go. Cool. Well, it's like when girls go to the salon and they're like, I want fucking red, and it comes out purple. It's like, it's not the fucking same. Like Ronald McDonald, maybe. Yeah, but, but like, so have you ever got like a botched hair nope. job or anything? No. I know people, they went and they wanted like maroon and it came out fucking red or something like that. It just Maroon didn't... is red. No, maroon's a shade of red. It's, it's not still the fucking red. Same. It's not the same. Is it the same? Mm-hmm. Getting your hair burgundy or maroon or whatever and then getting it red is completely different. What shade of red? Fire engine. Like fucking yeah, those fire are two different red. things. Lipstick red. So if you wanted burgundy. And or I like, went and I got it and it came out fucking Ronald McDonald. Or like purple. Pissed. Or like purple or something purple like that. Purple would probably be cool. Purple would be cool, but it's not what you wanted. Well, no. But. It's still botched. I know people who have gotten botched hair jobs, but. 
No, what happened? Me, what, what's the worst story Not you got? Me, what's sweetie. the worst story you got? Mom's fucking... Well, she did it to herself. She did a box diet. And it was supposed to be burnt Auburn. And she came out looking like Ronald McDonald. What the fuck is burnt Auburn? Like, like an orange? Like an orange Put it in the box. Put it in the box. Put it in the box. Burnt Auburn. Yeah. Burnt ends. Burnt auto paint. So like that? Yeah. Okay. And then it came out red. Ronald McDonald red. Mm. That's pretty bad. That's that's pretty bad. That's the it's worst you've really seen? really bad. Yeah. What's that? How did we get on sausages? Well, we talk a lot about sausage. <laughs> I love everybody. That is like, a piece of shit, sir. I love everybody. <laughs> a just sea like, cucumber. I love how everybody's just like, oh, look at this. That is a sausage. piece of shit next to a handful of pills. Burnt sausage. <laughs> go sea back. Cucumber. Go back. That looks like a dick. It's a sea cucumber. Go back. Go up. That is a turd next to a handful of pills. That's a sea cucumber. That's a sea, her cu- baby. That's a sea cucumber. With next to a handful of pills. Yeah. No, those are her babies. It's her diet pills. Her diet pills? She has to take them so her asshole gets bleached. <laughs> That's her Viagra. His Viagra. <laughs> Why can't it just be like the movie Elysium and like everything that we want, we just hop in this fucking machine and it's just like, oh, I'm fixed now. Eventually. Dang, I think... Like if you got a weird fucking limp, you just hop in this this machine on a fucking moon thing and it's just like, guess what? You don't have a limp anymore. Guess what? Your leg is the same length as your other one now. <laughs> Does it have a reset button? What? Do you mean? what? Like, like what if you fucked it up too bad and you tried so to what it is? So, it cures whatever you have. Have you ever seen Elysium? No. So Elysium is... A Matt Damon movie. I love Matt Damon. And it's set... It's almost... It's almost post... It's like... It's not post-apocalyptic because it's not apocalyptic. It's just more like... Semi-apocalyptic? It, it's no. more like end of times on Earth. It's not end of times either. It's weird. Yeah. It's like it's like everywhere turns into Brazil. Everywhere turns into a third world country and the rich move, right. to, move to a floating space station that looks like a giant uh, It sounds like it's going to happen. Right. right. Um, but so everybody, everything is kind of like a fucking... It's kind of like Wally, but people still live on Earth. Huh. Yeah. So, like, the Earth is trashed, but all the people live in poverty besides... A, some people don't live in poverty um, on Earth, but most people do. And you have to, like, pay your way to get into Elysium... Which is this fucking moon thing, and they have. Wait, this, this, did we see that with the no. robot girl? No. Oh, that was a good movie too, though. That yeah. was Edge of Tomorrow. No, uh, it was called um, uh, Shit. What was that movie it was called? The girl's name. It was a uh, 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 Alexa uh, Alexa Battle Angel or something like that. It was really good no. though. Yes, that was what it's called. Battle Angel. Battle Angel was the second part of it. Uh, let me look this up real quick. But anyway, so Alicia, Alita, uh, Alita, Alita Battle Angel. That was actually a really good show. It's very good movie. It's uh, Bounty Hunters, basically. So anyway, but Elysium is basically this moon space station. And they have this machine. And I can't remember what it's called. But if you have like cancer or a disease or a weird fucking limp or if you're dying, then you literally hop in this machine and it fixes you and you're like blank slate. You keep your same age. So you basically are, can live an entirely it just, full life. It just scans your body. Because it shows one of the ladies who lives up there, and everybody in their in, in their home has one. If you live so up there on the space die? station, no. So no, she you tanned. Live a whole life. She oh. tanned so much that she had skin cancer, and it showed like all the spots on her body. Mm. She got in this machine, and it just scanned her, and it showed the disease, the cancer she had, and then it just scanned her again, and it fixed it, and she popped back out and went back to fucking tanning. Fucking, she's stupid. Yeah, yeah. So basically, that's the way it works. Like you're allowed to live a full life with no disease or condition. But it just showed like, like this, and this this little girl. They put this little girl in it, and she had like a deformity where one of her legs wasn't as long as the other. And then it showed what deformity she had, and then it scanned her, and it made her leg longer. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of cool. But basically, Matt Damon gets fucking gets like radiation cancer, and he's dying. But the only thing it can't fix death. So once you die, you die. Yeah, yeah. you can't fix death. And, and anybody that hasn't seen Elysium, uh, I'm not doing a spoiler alert because this came out in 2013, and uh, you should have watched this by now. But basically, me. but basically, he has like an accident at work, and they make these robots. They make these robots that the robot bodies. Yeah. So basically, if you have enough money, well, you I mean, can, they have these exosuits now for the military. Yeah. Hmm. Basically, if you have enough money, you can. They make these robots right here. Robots are basically police. 
And all the citizens oh, are like in, poor. like in the Battle Angel movie. Yeah, basically. So the, I think the same guy who made um, whatever it's called, because they use like the same situation, the same town and everything, but it has aliens in it. District 9. District 9, that's it. It's the same Did director, I'm pretty sure. It's literally like the same, yeah, it says right here, from the director of District 9. Yeah. Oh. It's literally like the same universe almost. But he has like an accent with like radiation Ugh. because the, the robots need radiation treatment for the last part the, to be built or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they need this radiation treatment and he actually like gets locked in there and he gets fucking fried. And then he almost dies, but he stays alive. And so he's like dying, basically. He has to take this medicine so he doesn't die and he just lives long enough. That sucks. Because that's all the, you can't afford treatment on Earth. In order to, for him to actually live, you have to go up to Elysium, but you have to have a lot of money to get there. Yeah. So basically, they're just like trying to, it's like a bank robbery scheme if almost. You ain't got money, really. you're fucked. Yeah. It's basically like a bank robbery sque- scheme, but not really. But he gets this exosuit so he can actually move because he can't fucking walk on He's his so own. weak, he can't stand. Yeah. Pretty crazy. It's actually a really good movie. We should watch it sometime. Yeah. Even though I just ruined the entire movie for you, but it's yeah. still good. It's still really good. And it's got the dame in it. Yeah, it's got the dame. I actually seen a video. Isn't he a Martian? Yeah. That was a good movie. I seen a, a video of him. He's directing. He was directing this movie. I don't know what movie it was. What the set? What movie Maze set it was? Runner. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> Maze Runner. I don't know. What, I don't know what movie set it was on. But he was directing. Force Cup Two. He was directing it, and the guy that was the actor kept fucking up his lines, and he had, like, two lines. That's all he had, and he kept messing them up, and Matt Damon's like, guy, you all right? Like, you, he's like, can I get a line read? He's like, you don't need a line read. It's two fucking lines. This is all you got. Two lines. Just, just say the two lines. Let's go. We're wasting time. We need to get this done. And I guess they'd done it, like, three or three or four takes, and he just couldn't get it. And he's And then... They tried again. He's like, guy, what the fuck? What are you doing? It's two fucking lines. If I wanted to do it, if I wanted to, uh, to get it done the right way, I'd just hop in and do it myself. He's, and the guy looks at me and goes, why don't you just do it then, movie star? And he, and he starts running. And he like starts walking towards him. He's like, hey, fuck you. Fuck you, all right? He's like, call me movie star. He's like, do it fucking right. It's two fucking lines. And then they almost get in a fucking fight. Huh. And I was like, god damn. That like, reminds me, I saw uh, an interview with... Uh, um. Shit, Martin Lawrence and uh, Will Smith when they were talking about Bad Boys. Mm-hmm. And you remember whenever the scene, whenever the uh, the boyfriend of Martin Lawrence's daughter comes over, the big tall guy. You remember that scene? Yeah. And they fucking intimidate him and shit. And I guess they were like, but he's like thirteen years old. He's like fi- thirteen or fourteen years old. Yeah, I guess that was the first time he's been in a movie, and they really wanted him to be like terrified or whatever. So they were like real, like they kept like uh, being real nice to him and shit. And then whenever they come up to him, they just be like, started being real aggressive. They were nice, and they started getting slowly aggressive. And then they just like got really aggressive. And then they pre- pretended to be thugs in the movie scene. And like that dude was scared shitless. They thought that they were, he was gonna pass out from being so terrified. In like real scene. life before they started the, the before they no started like filming. there's so many film things like. And then I saw like in so talking about Matt Damon, I saw Pri- Saving Private Ryan. They said that Matt Damon didn't do all the training that the other people did. So they generally had a resentment for Matt Damon in that movie. You know how they treated him like shit because they're going all the way across this country to fucking find him, to bring him home. So these actors had a genuine like resentment because he didn't do like the two and a half months of like army training that they had to do to get prepared for this movie. So they actually fucking hated him basically kind (laughs) of. And so it's it's half real. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. How, how do you know? Where'd you get that from? It was on one of the behind the scenes shit. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Um, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you're not. I don't always out. talk out of my ass. I, 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 you never know. No. Yeah, don't be like this guy. Yeah, don't be like that guy. Don't be like this guy. Don't, don't want to get your guy. asshole bleached and shit. Who the fuck you think? I don't want to get my asshole bleached. It's crazy. I don't want to do that. Hey, I'm only pointing fingers behind the camera. I mean, behind the mic. <laughs> <laughs> There is no camera. Nobody knew who I was talking about. Welcome to the Comcast behind the mic. This is what actually happens. Yeah. Nobody wears a shirt. <laughs> Nobody wears a shirt. Actually, only two, only one of us is not wearing a shirt. Only one of us is usually not wearing a shirt. That's Cheyenne. Yeah, it's yeah. me. It's me, guys. Sorry. As you know, brothers brothers that do a podcast together share everything together. Oh. Yeah, like my dog. What? What? Yeah. You're a good dad and an uncle. Together, you're a dunkle. 
Okay. I mean, I know you had one fucking wine cooler, but... Okay. (laughs) We are moving on. We are. And we're back post-pee meter. So we hope you all uh, are enjoying the weather with... uh, All this fucking rain? Yeah, it's been raining, you dumbass. (laughs) Here in Indiana, we hope you're all join the fucking sopping wet floods. Do you realize and the hurricane down south? Do you realize that we have flood. we have a lot more listeners outside of Indiana than we do oh, yeah. in Indiana? Yeah. All the ones so from, I hope it's nice in the you guys. Flood. I hope it's not 120 degrees in India right now. <laughs> yeah, shout out well, to India. Well, I don't know if people have like fairs or festivals that are in the summertime. If you're enjoying those, out having fun with those, or you're fucking Blueberries just, are in season. Maybe there's a blueberry festival. I don't know what the lockdown restrictions or the COVID restrictions are with other countries and states right now, but in Indiana, the, they're relaxed We're enough. We're free to roam. They're relaxed enough that people that have full vaccinations can go and have fun and do things and don't have to wear masks. If um, not, you kind of fucked. Yeah, and if you don't have your vaccinations, get fucking vaccinated. I mean, you don't have to. But it really helps, and it helps us all go back to fucking normal. So I don't know if anybody's out there, like, experiencing the fun of summer, because, like I said, there's more than just Indiana that fucking listen to us. Some countries don't have it yet. What? The vaccination, or, like, you're even access to it. Well, I know small islands like the Grand Cayman haven't even opened up their borders still yet. I don't think think Canada did either. I don't think Canada ever will again, because everybody's like... Yeah, they will. Well, everybody's like, everybody's like, I'm going to Canada, where where everything's better, which it doesn't sound like too bad of an idea. Cody, that was four years ago when Trump got elected. No, I'm just saying, that doesn't sound like too bad of an idea, though, to be honest. To go to Canada? Yeah. 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 Just go live in Canada from now on. Just fuck it. You know what I mean? You're one big beaver, eh? (laughs) (laughs) There's a big beaver, eh? No, that's Brother Bear, and I think it's Alaska. (laughs) Do what? <laughs> the, the, uh, you not remember on Brother Bear? He goes, that's one big bee. He goes, I'm a bear. I'm not a bear. I'm a human. He goes, hey, you're one big beaver. I don't remember that. Fuck, it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like the cartoon Brother Bear? Yeah. I don't know. The moose. One of the mooses. Hey, you're one big beaver. <laughs> you're one, one big, big beaver. beaver. <laughs> it's true. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I reckon. Yeah, Canada's dope. Canada would be dope. I Canada think. gets to smoke the dope. They do. So does Michigan. Do they? Yeah. Why not? They've been legal since 2018. Oh, yeah. You're right. Maybe before then. I don't even know. I mean. I mean what? Huh? If you gotta do it. Oh. Yeah, we've been getting... Dang, I'm looking at the stats right now. Dang. For dang. downloads and stuff. We oh, no, Ryan can't think of anything to talk about. He's going to look up our stats. Doing the math. I was just looking them up because we have been getting a lot more. Hey, you know what we could talk about? Your new tattoo. In different That's countries. something that happened in the life of Ryan. Yes. Something new, something fun, and something interesting. Something something other than normal. You mean... Ryan got a tattoo and it looks like shit. You mean my only tattoo. I didn't it, it looks like shit. And it's stupid. And it's a terrible idea. It is. It's fucking dumb. It's so dumb and lame. I don't even know why he got that. All the stupid tattoos. He got a fucking chicken. He got a chicken in the shape of a tree on his arm. That's the weirdest fucking thing I've ever seen. Yeah. It's like a chicken. He's like, give me the chicken and the biscuit crackers, but make it look like a tree. And my and advice. like, yep, go ahead. My advice to everybody is not to get uh, to not get a tattoo because it's a horrible idea. Just don't get one. Yeah, Ryan got a tattoo, and I'm just, I, I am. You're jealous, and now you're planning on that? Yeah. I'm not fucking jealous. I yeah, you my, are. Is that what he's saying? No, he's I'm doing? not jealous. Oh. I plan I'm my next. Minds. I plan, suddenly got telepathy. I plan, <laughs> I plan my next tat literally, Two. literally the day after I get done, I, I'm literally like looking other stuff up. And I like tell her that, hey, I've got this that I'm looking at, or I think this would be cool. And I just, I have a bunch of shit in my brain. That I'll get. But also, if I think shit's cool, I'm going to most likely probably get it. Slap it on there, buddy. Yeah. You pick it, I'll stick it. You couldn't just buy a sticker and put it on the table. You got to put it on your body. That's something. Yeah, that's right. Just slap them. I'm just going to start getting all these uh, beer stickers on my body. Oh, that's not a beer sticker. Actually, the Ryan Geist ghost would actually look pretty cool as a tattoo. If you make it look... Ghost? It's a... It's a skull. 
Yeah. Not a it's, ghost. I thought it was like a ghost it's skull. A, it's a gnome skull. No, it's like a like a beer drop skull. Do you think gnomes just don't... Gnomes just have... Like, Shit! They're, they're, they're they skull. don't wear pointy hats! They are the pointy hat! Yeah, yeah exactly. Whoa! They use it to cover up their fucking heads. Yeah. That's fucked up. Gnome skulls That are, just blew gnome my skulls, fucking mind. Gnome skulls are pointed. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Holy fucking wow. I always thought it was like a ghost. Well, I don't Does think it look so. like a ghost? Kind of. No. Not me. Uh, I'm trying to remember how to spell Ryan Geist. Yeah, we spell it for you. R H I N E G E I S T. There you go. Uh, let's see. So I think it looks like a ghost. Ghost of the Rhine. Fuck you both. And and the ghost of the Rhine is a gnome. Because when we were in over the Rhine in Cincinnati, everybody had gnomes in their sure fucking house. Know? So they were gnomes for good luck, is what it was. They were gnomes oh, for good luck. Do you gotta be luck. protected from it? It's a European. It's a European thing. In European or German? Is Geist German? It's German. It's European and German. Goist. I'm mean, Germany is in Europe. Right, exactly. But they were all. So Eastern. is it a German gnome ghost that's gonna eat off your toes? Fucking toes, bro. So you bro. gotta like, have a gnome it's in your a house fucking, for good luck. It's a ghost. Yeah, it's also, ghost a, of the it's also a gnome. So I was right. That's fucked up. No, Ryan Geist means ghost of the Rhine. That's what it means. Well, duh, but what is the ghost? Why do I have to have a gnome for I'm gnome? telling you. Why is it a pointy dicked fucking head ghost? I'm telling you. <laughs> it is because is it gonna there is a gnome. Off? There literally it was the it was the creepiest little it was kind of interesting, but it was kind of creepy because our Airbnb had a gnome. Every restaurant we went in had a gnome. All the shops had a fucking gnome. Everybody had a goddamn garden gnome everywhere. And it's like an Eastern European thing, like German and uh Well, that European. town was built by immigrants. Yeah. And it was like good luck. And they everybody had a gnome. Okay, but I want to know why I have to have luck. a gnome for good luck. Is this ghost gnome going to fucking bite off my feet? No, diabetes is going to take your feet. Well, probably. <laughs> Did you know, um, fuck... Where is it? It's somewhere that if you don't leave butter in your shoes, Santa will eat your feet off. Santa will eat yes, your feet off. Yes, it is a real thing. I think it's Poland. The, there's a lot of, like, Norwegian shit. They still hang their trees upside down. Like, Norway and, like, Iceland and shit like that. Yeah, they, don't you know? Santa loves fucking margarine toes. I mean, but, but that, like, that's, like, the Hildefuck and, like... The Hildefuck. Uh, Hildefuck. That's and, where uh, we all go. Like, it's the here to fit. Like Krampus. They still believe in Krampus and See, shit. You know, it's which is kind of like fucking rock and roll. Krampus, but if you don't leave him butter in your shoes, you, he's going to But, like, the they have, like, trolls and, like, gnomes and, like, they have house gnomes and, that is, like, they believe in the whole, like, spiritual thing. The realm? Of, like, creatures and fairies and shit well, like that. Isn't there a realm where gnomes come from? A or realm. fairies? A realm. Oh, realm. a realm. Yeah. Yeah, you I, know, like, the crow on your car? The bad on me. The your car. I don't know. That's what you used to fucking sound like. Oops. Oops. So <laughs> gnomes are known as symbols of good luck. Originally, gnomes were thought to provide protection, especially a buried treasure and minerals in the ground. Hey, there's some good fucking dirt down here. Right here. I'm standing on it. It's all the gnome poops. And uh, they are still used today to watch over crops and livestock. Often tucked into the rafters of a barn or placed in the garden. Hmm. So they are on the streets of Cincinnati to look at all the fat fuckers walking down the sidewalk. To protect us. Livestock. But anyway, so yeah, but in Cincinnati, in Cincinnati, literally everybody had a gnome. Everybody had a gnome. There was like two gnomes in our Airbnb. And it's like a thing as good luck because it's an Eastern European German thing. Hmm. And the ghost of the Rhine, Rhine Geist, that's what it means. So, literally, that's what it is. It's a ghost. Ghost of a gnome. Ghost of a gnome. And then the uh, the Funky Buddha Brewery, wasn't it a ghost too? Funky Buddha. No, it was just a Buddha. Buddha, Buddha. You sure? Pretty sure. Um, Funky Buddha. Uh, that's almost like Booty. Buddha. DDA. There you go. That's DDA, sir. Oh, yeah, it is a Buddha. DDA J. But yeah, Ryan guys, it's it's literally it's a it's the ghost of the Rhine. The ghost of the Rhine because that's where the brewery is located. So that's pretty cool. But seriously, I honestly think like that's I feel like to we represent have to have a gnome now. That's to represent the fucking gnome. We have a Christmas gnome. That's not the same. I know, but he only comes at Christmas time. 
That's why we got to put butter in our sandals. We don't need our fucking toes. <laughs> Not sandals. Mm. <laughs> the Christmas nose only like open toed shoes. <laughs> the Christmas nose. Hey, where is it? Poland? Do you know where they put the butter in the shoes? Huh? Do you know where they put the butter in the shoes? Um, I have beer no idea. in the shoe is Australia, and that's a shoey. <laughs> that's funny. That's what it's called. Does your feet stink? You chug a beer from your shoe. Is that a movie? No. You chug a beer out of a boot? That's yeah. No, it's a movie. That's beer fest. Yeah, that was a good movie. That's that's German, but no. Oh. You actually take your shoe off, pour a beer in it, and then drink it. That's Australia. What the fuck? Yeah. Y'all, y'all, y'all are crazy. Catching snakes and got some giant ass camel spiders and. That's not Australia. Might be. That's Afghanistan and Iraq. Well, y'all crazy too with them bugs. Just because they're staying there. And your crazy ass mean sounding fucking koalas. Yeah. You guys are cool though. Drop bears. You guys are like family. Uh, So while halflings were commonly... I typed in do gnomes have pointed heads. While halflings were commonly said to resemble short humans, gnomes were more comparable to elves with whom... Uh, they shared pointed ears and high cheekbones, or even dwarves. Why would Wait, you type in do gnomes have pointed heads? The fucking Ryan Geist no. ghost it's tells it It's just a logo. It doesn't matter. It doesn't Jesus fucking matter, Christ. Bro. Let's get some D&D going in this bitch. Uh, so I looked up the butter in the shoes. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to figure out... Put butter in the shoes so your Santa don't bite your toes off. I don't think it's Santa. Well, it's kind of like their version of Krampus. I know it's somewhere. I know I'm not making this shit up. Somebody out there is screaming at me, and they know. They know. Well, I'm looking at something. It came out. It came something came up about Italians, but it, it wasn't like an Italian tradition. But it's not in there. Hmm. So I'm trying to find it. Butter stealing Belgium. Belgium. It's a Christmas tradition. So it's still Eastern European. And it's so Santa don't eat your toes off. Yeah. It talks about... So, holiday traditions in Belgium. Um, what do we have here? Um, we're talking about, you know, St. Nicholas and the reindeer and whatever. Um, Black Peter climbs down the chimney and leaves him presents. Okay, so St. Nicholas lands on the rooftop. Black Peter? So, St. Nicholas lands on the... It said, during the night, St. Nicholas arrives on the rooftop... With his horse and with his helpers. If children have been good, Black Peter climbs down the chimney and leaves presents uh, in and around their shoes. If children have been bad, he leaves uh, he leaves sticks instead. Belgium uh, also celebrates the Advent, uh, which includes a period of the Sundays before Christmas celebrating the coming of Jesus. What the fuck? Oh my God. <laughs> The Black story, Peter. the story of Black Peter. But I think he's black because he comes, he goes down the chimney. Oh. That's the reason he's black. He's not. But look, there's nobody fucking just solid black like that. I mean, probably. Um, it's a Dutch tradition. Hmm. They call him Black Peter because of the chimney soot, but they have him parading around with Santa Claus and Saint. They have him parading around with Saint Nick in blackface. That's where the controversy is, because it's a pagan ritual, and it's a pagan story, and it's like, oh, Black Peter, because he's full of chimney soot, but it's a white dude in blackface. I don't think that he's doing it for the blackface part, though. That's why people don't like it, Yeah, because they're calling him Black Peter, but he's just a white dude that's covered in soot, Yeah, but he's completely painted black, walking down the streets with St. Nick. Uh, so before elves and eight tiny reindeer, Saint Nicholas had more, uh, much more, had a much more menacing assistant named Black Peter. This companion was the physical opposite of Saint Nicholas, tall and gaunt with a dark beard and hair. Uh, Black Peter was associated with the uh, punitive side of Christmas, kind of like Krampus, but uh, Krampus is way scarier than Black Peter. Like, let's be honest, well, uh, yeah. a guy full of chimney soot. He's not full of it. He's covered in it. Yeah, whatever. So traditionally, St. Nicholas would hang out or hand out presents to good children 
while it fell to Black Peter to dole out coal and sometimes knocks uh, knocks on the head to children who misbehaved. Can you imagine? This is guy parading down the street as this Black Peter character, and he gives your kid a lump of coal and smacks him on the back of the fucking head. That sounds like something my dad would do. <laughs> You're hey, you stupid the- fuck. Boom, here you go. Keep warm. Who are you supposed to be? I thought you were saying He's like, I'm Black Peter, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's that's that's crazy. Um. Oh, okay, so I just pulled up some Christmas drifts, and so uh, where is this? At? It began in the 15th century. So we have British kids, and it looks like Austria is where Krampus started. Um, and then we have roller skate miss, roller skate miss, which is in uh, Venezuela, That's cool. which is the capital of Caracas, which they have like roller skate Christmas things going on. Iceland is the Yule Cat. Uh, one of the weirdest festive traditions we've he- heard from Iceland is a giant cat that's said to roam the snowy countryside during Christmas time. Uh, the Yule Cat is incentive for their workers. Those who worked hard would receive a new set of clothes, but those who didn't got um, would be devoured by the gi- uh, by the gigantic uh, cat. Uh, cobweb Christmas is in Ukraine. Ukraine's strange festival traditions is not for, uh, arachnophobics. They have, they make these big giant spider webs in the Christmas trees. Jeez. Uh, colonial Sat, or Sa- colonial Santa is in Japan. Um, see, this is the reason why everybody doesn't like the character of Black Peter in 2021, because these are all white people painted with black faces. Well, this one's weird. Colonial Santa is Japan, and they celebrate with, like, fast food, like KFC. Hmm. They do, like, Kentucky Christmas or That's blah, blah, blah way Christmas. way better. The one. Irish leave out a pint of Guinness and mincemeat pies. Yeah. And then uh, Germany also has the pickles. So they hang, uh, like... Oh, the lucky pickle! Yeah, for their, on their Christmas trees and stuff. Um, Finland has, like, sauna days. Uh, shoes by the fire in the Netherlands... Is like shoes with like carrots and stuff like that for the reindeer. Um, what else do we have? Uh, the Belfana, Belfana the witch is in Italy. Uh, on December 25th, when in Italy, as well as the action takes place on the eve of January 5th, according to the folklore, the woman named Belfana visits all the children in Italy to fill their stockings with candy and leave presents. If you've been good, just like Father Christmas, Belfana enters through the chimney and leaves treats for children who live there, typically wine and local delicacies. I mean, this... They leave the kids wine? That's what it says. Uh, South Africa has fried caterpillars for their Hmm. Christmas. So, like, it's kind of interesting, but also kind of fucked up about, like, some of these Christmas traditions, especially, like, the Black Peter one and giving kids wine... And sh- and I like mean, the butter in the shoes. It's legal to drink at like eighteen. Right, but the butter in the shoes because you're like scaring your kids. You gotta put butter in your fucking shoes, or like you're gonna get your freaking feet eaten. It's a, it's it's interesting, but it's also kind of weird. But especially like in in, in 2021, it's still like it's a controversy because people are still like parading around in blackface, and it's only it's only white people. Like it, that's only white based on the images. It's only white people, but. I can see why it's a controversy because it's a little. They're technically not in blackface. This is it's just a tradition that they have. It's it's different. They're no, not... it's fucking not. It's well, not blackface. That... What is it? Black Peter is. He's not doing it to be racist. And Bob Marley's a pop culture icon, but you can't walk around and paint your face black because he was black. They still do that. They're not doing it. Everybody to be knows black. it's Black Peter. They're doing it to. Pretend they have coal on their face. It's but not that's why pretend it's pretend to be another race, you, and it's not. That's the thing, though. If you want to pretend to be, if you wanted to pretend to have coal on your face, you wipe coal just a little bit on your face. You don't cover your entire fucking face. Black Peter goes around fucking Germany. He's gonna have you covered in coal. Excuse you, sir. He doesn't take a bath until he's done. I I don't think I don't think painting your face brown or black is. Look, there's a protest right there to get rid of Black Peter. Yeah, I. It's a hundred percent condonable. Like it's not. Some of these people have it. Don't have their faces painted. Some of them are actually. I feel like once you get black people to accept Black Peter, it'll be good. It'll. Be good. I don't think black good. people should accept Black Peter. So I think you should probably watch what you say. Call him a different name. Call him Sooty. It doesn't Peter. matter. You're still painting your face black, Soot Peter, if you're white. 
Now, if it was a black guy pretending to be Black Peter in a story, that's completely fucking different. Well, you shouldn't make somebody who's a different race play that role just because that they're black. Exactly. No, if, if they wanted to, you're not making them do it. If he wanted to be the character, he can. But it's literally the only people painting their faces were white people. Anyway. You can't paint your face black. I mean, it's definitely a white tradition. It's just like, black people don't have, hey, we got white yeah, Peter it's Dutch. here. It's Dutch. I don't think there's we a got large, white Peter delivering presents. I don't think there's a large, uh, like a wide range of Dutch people that are African American or black. So I don't think, I don't think they're doing it to be mean. Well, no, it's just tradition. Uh, I think that's a tradition that could probably die. I mean, so who's going to deliver to peasants? Santa's too fat. So he, he doesn't deliver to peasants. To the presence. Does. He doesn't deliver the fucking presence. He's the one that climbs he, down the chimney. What's he do? Climb down the chimney no, and all Santa the way hands Santa? Saint Nick. The story was Saint Nick hands out gifts. He goes no. down and fucking he messes is, with the kids. He is with Santa. Santa but, lands, yes, but he's the opposite. Santa lands on the roof. He's anti Santa. Well, Santa you can't lands. Make Santa go down there and have the story with around. Santa lands on the roof with the reindeer. He's like, here, Black Peter, and the Black Peter is like, Doop, and shoots down the chute and lays presents out. Or smacks the kid upside the head. So he's like his little helper. No, he smacked kids upside the head and he didn't give presents out. He gave them coal. Black Peter didn't. Yes, he did. It says Black Peter was associated with the punitive side of Christmas. A tech, a traditionally, St. Nicholas would hand out presents to good children while it fell to Black Peter to dole out coal and sometimes knock uh, knocks on the head to children who misbehaved. Hmm. That's it. That's it. He didn't give any fucking presents. I mean, he went down the chimney. Him. That's why he was covered in soot. That's why they call him Black Peter. It's probably cranky because he's dealing with fucking coal and asshole children. Would you rather right? have a man in blackface conk you on the head or would you rather have fucking Krampus throw you in his duffel bag and eat you? Give me Black Peter. Black Peter all day. For show. Black Peter for show. I don't know. I mean, Krampus is definitely scarier, but it was a different... Well, yeah, I don't want to be eaten. Just smack me upside the head. And he drowns you in he his bathtub. He doesn't eat He doesn't eat kids. Yes, he Krampus? does. Krampus? I don't yeah, think he, he eats kids. Yes, he does. No, he, like, makes them slaves and no. shit. He okay, well, first them. of all, I don't want to be He throws them. He, throw, he beats them be with wooden bundles. He, he ties fucking sticks together in bundles, beats them, throws them in his fucking potato bag... Takes them to his house where he drowns them in a tub and then eats them. He takes them to the, his economy condo. Yeah. He looks like Satan. No, thank you. Give me the. Give me Mr. Peter. Krampus. Mr. Peter? Yeah. Mr. Peter. Give me Mr. Peter. Mr. Peter down the road. <laughs> uh, so Central European. Um... Let's see. No, I don't think he. I don't think he eats them though. I think yeah. they're like he his slaves. He eats them. Pretty sure he's like. What does slave. he want slaves for? He's Why not? Us. He's dope. He don't need slaves for what? You don't know. He doesn't need them. He eats them. You're fucking scary. Who's scary? Fucking Krampus, dude. I mean, they have that festival. I forget where it's at though. Krampus. I want to. I want to go with that. Kids. Go. Look, he literally looks like Satan. That's who he's supposed to represent. Yeah. Yeah. So, dude, do you want Satan or you want Black Peter? Haven't you seen a? A Christmas Horror Story? Didn't you guys watch it last year? No, he she was she was. I won't watch, watch it. it. He, I told him he yet. can watch it, but I ain't watching it. It's not that bad. It's actually do, really good. I don't do scary shit, or I won't sleep at night. Krampus, Krampus knocks in Austria, but they have them all over the world now. No fucking thank you. See, he ties you Look up. Look at all those miserable kids. And he steals you. Hey, get in my barrel! <laughs> it's so weird, dude. Like I think it's just kind of weird. What? That everybody's like, oh, yeah, we're celebrating kids getting fucking You just kidnapped. did it to scare kids, though. If mm-hmm. you wanted a kid to be good, you fucking scared him. I mean, That's I think I think seeing Krampus talk would be cool or maybe even, like, hanging out. But I, I don't know. It's a, it's kind of freaky to me because, because I watched Well, like, they could have said instead of, like, knock on your head, Black Peter comes down the chimney and rapes you or something. That's what? bad. Jesus Christ. Right. Why'd, like, Why'd you have to go there? All I'm saying is they could have made What's it worse. What's worse than kidnapping you, making you a slave? Raping you. Raping you. <laughs> you know what's worse than a rapist? A child. <laughs> a child. <laughs> have you a seen that video? Child. No. What? Have you seen that video? No. Ah. What video? We did watch it's this. It's a video. And it goes, um, do you know what's worse than a rapist? And then above, it's the word child, but it's covered with the paper, and the guy rips it off, and it 
the camera turns to this other guy and he goes, a child. <laughs> 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 anyway, so we actually did watch this movie. It's called Wiener Dog. No, don't talk about this. It's extremely this movie, sad. This movie's called Wiener Dog. Warning: If you don't like the death of dogs, or you don't like it's really one dog. sad movies, it's one dog. Just tune out right now. Fast forward about two minutes, or cut out the stuff about rape because I'm the because you gave me shit for bringing up like articles about rape, like news oh, articles. About rape, this was a joke. and then you go right into it. A joke about rape? I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay. Anyway. Anyway. Just so tune out if you don't want shitty to Shitty material it. aside. So, hey, so. Shitty there, material. You're, 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 there's you're, this, ready to explain you're talking about dog material. fucking. I'm not, no, dogs what dying. What are you talking oh. about? No, what I just the thought, fuck are you even talking about? I figured about? it was, you it called it wiener dog. I was like, okay. It's an extremely it's sad. It's a dog. It's about story. a fucking wiener dog. One wiener dog. Yeah, yes. it's extremely There's millions sad. Millions of dogs. Yeah, it, but this is one dog's journey. China kills hundreds. I'm trying to fucking tell you about the movie. Sad. There's a movie called Wiener Dog on Amazon Prime that we watched. It's sad, don't It listen. sounded good. And it's basically the story of this wiener dog. They lie. As it goes through its life and through these people's lives and how it influences their lives. And Danny DeVito's does in it. And it was rated R, and I was like, maybe there's, like, a sex scene in it or something. You know, whatever. So, what? that's all I was thinking. Because it said it was rated or R, like and I was mild like... mild nudity or something. Right. Maybe. And it's good. It's okay to have, like, a, a good... Like, it's, you can have a good, move, a good movie that has values that's still rated R. Big floppy weird dog tits. <laughs> But so the movie, the, like literally, I'm not gonna no spoil. I'm not gonna give any spoilers. It fucking died, okay? No, yeah, he did. <sighs> Jesus Christ! Spoiler! I it told died. Him to fast forward. Spoiler alert! It fucking died. Anyway, I'm not gonna tell anything else. But anyway, this movie it's about a fucking wiener dog, and it's so sad and morbid and morbid and fucked up. If if okay, I thought it was interesting. And there's like an inter, there's like a, a, a an intermission. The intermission was really there's an cute. intermission. There's an a, a, there's a really cute intermission uh, that involves a wiener dog. But other than that, it's kind of a fucked up movie and it's kind of sad. But if you're if you're interested in that, go to Amazon Prime Video. If you got Amazon Prime Video, look up Wiener Dog. Watch it. I, I think it's cry enjoy- your eyes out. I think it can be enjoyable to an extent. To other who? Than, other, Ryan. Ryan would fucking love it. What? what? Ryan would love it because he's, a sick, he's a sick fucker. Off. Ryan's a sick fucker and he would love it. I cried when Noel Yeller died. So. No, you fucking didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. You cried at Jungle whatever his name is. You cried when Mighty Joe Young died, you Fuck fucking yeah. pussy. The gorilla? Don't yeah. say that. Don't say the P word. Yeah. Fucking. Yeah. Don't be throwing Quit playing with water bottles. Everybody quit fidgeting with shit. Sorry. I'm going to get you all a fucking fidget spinner. You're talking about Set dead. everything down. You're talking about dead dogs. We're doing a podcast right now. Concentrate, everybody. We know we're doing a podcast. Get right back now. to topic. What? Dead the dogs? sad wiener dog? <laughs> yeah. Get back to topic. We're talking about <gasps> lunch Today, meat now. <laughs> All right. Let's get into some news articles. It's about that time. So, uh, the world's largest... Cheese. Oh. It's not the world's largest cheese. The world's largest four-hour workday trial... Uh, That's has a four-day week trial. It's four hour. It's four four day week trial. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Should we skip? No. Go to another new one. No, it's right here. Is it like I've got. It. So it's, it's a four day UK. working week. So the, it's the world's largest four day working week, and I know some places like, especially like trade unions and shit like that, uh, they work and uh, like um. They do long days. Though. Yeah, service workers, trade workers, they work. They work six, sometimes seven days a week if they're gone. And uh, like I know, traveling workers here in the U.S., they'll work seven days straight for a month, and then they're off for like a week. And, and then they, they get their week off. Right, if they get their week off, and they come back and do it all over again. So what was it, Breadstick Dan or whatever he was talking about? You remember? That guy, the construction worker guy on TikTok. Well, just let me finish the article. So, so the first, so the world's largest four-day work week trial has <laughs> come through as a, as a success. Testing took place in Iceland between 2015 and 2019, and the results had recently just come out. 
Um, it included about 1% of the country's population. Iceland's population was only recorded at around 356,000, uh, almost 357,000 uh, in 2019. <laughs> so that means that <laughs> that means that 3,570 people were involved in the study. That's a good a good study. That's an entire so uh, a giant for the factory. time frame in the yeah so like a giant time. manufacturing factory uh, so pretend like a giant manufacturing factory all switched to this and it was a complete success. Me and somebody else were talking about this at work um, this past week. I think it was on Friday. And she was telling me about the study and the, how it went really well. And we were just like, right. oh, let's switch. So the participants are quoted stating that their produ- productivity and overall well-being greatly increased. The Icelandic Trade Union Federation is already trying to negotiate a permanent result from this study. And especially, like, like I said, if you're a service industry worker... Or, like, if you have to work six, seven days a week, I mean, this right. this completely this completely changes the game. Mm-hmm. Now, does it say if they're doing eight-hour days or 12-hour day? Ten? Maybe it's ten. It's going to be, it's, it's it, no, they're actually uh, cutting their hours down. 35 to 36. 35 to 36 hours. So, they're actually working less than a 40-hour work week most oh. of the time. So these uh, new negotiations that have uh, taken place since the study ended in 2019 have given 86% of all Icelandic trade workers um, to uh, the, the ability to work four-day work weeks. Hmm. So work-life balances and stress are reduced as well as perceived burnouts from working. Fucking amen, dude. Research uh, Gund Munder D. Gund Harrison said the Icelandic... The Icelandic shorter working week journey tells us that not only is it possible to work less in modern times, but that progressive change is possible too. So this is, and I know uh, uh, the company I work for has recently, a few departments have switched to a four day work week. It's actually, I love it. I I absolutely love it. It, Four tens? Yeah, it's a four, it's four 10 hour days. So I absolutely love it. Not having to work that fifth day. Honestly, takes a lot of stress off of you every week. Um, because I've worked five days a week. Uh, because I worked five days a week for my entire working career. It's it, it, even though even though I've been doing it for a long for a while. Even though it still gets me like on Wednesday, I'm like, oh shit, tomorrow's my last day. And once you get Thursday out of the way, you got uh, you have a three day a nice three day weekend. It's great. I think it's awesome. I really do. And I, I genuinely think people, like, it should be more widespread, to be honest. Even if it's just eight-hour days. I feel like even if it's eight-hour days, four days a week, you're still going to get a lot of products done if you are more product done. More output, anyway. Because if your workers are well-rested, if they're happy, satisfied, whatever, you take care of your employees, they're going to take care of you. And that's just how business is done or it should right. be done. And not to mention in this study, pay, like salaries did not go down at all. So they kept the same fucking salary. Shouldn't. If you're getting yeah. more product out of anything, you deserve a fucking raise. Yeah, so they set, they kept salaries the same, and the output was increased. The productivity was great. So basically, nobody lost anything. They, they just gained more time with their family and it. friends. That's more beer you could drink, everybody. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but that's the only new story I've got this week. Ryan, do you have any? Yeah, I got one. So the last news story we got here. So the world's tallest sand castle was assembled in Denmark. Uh, a group of artists came together in Denmark and they build what seems to be seems to be believed as the tallest sand castle, standing sixty nine point four feet high. That's a big fucking sand castle. Uh, the team of thirty sculptors, led by a Netherlands artist, used more than five thousand tons of sand to construct the sand castle. Uh, and the sand mixture contained 10% clay to get a stronger hold. Uh, the artist finally said uh, the product was coated in glue so it could hold its shape through the winter. So they're obviously going to leave it there for as long as they can. As long as they can, it looks like. But the last Guinness World Record holder, I don't think they've measured this one yet. So they don't technically have the world record yet. But the last one uh, was built in Germany in 2019, and it was 57.9 feet high. Who in the fuck wants to build a 64 or 69 foot high sandcastle? But it's crazy because 
I guess it's, it's just a pile of sand, and like they went and like sculpted like a city out of it, and like there's even little sand people and all kinds of shit. Like there's a dude in like a, a sand dude in a boat, like feeding like a serpent, like that's coming out of like the water. And there's like little train cars and like little houses and all kinds of shit. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's like it's like legit shit. It's insane. Is this it, or you were looking at a different one? I think that's it. No, I, maybe it's not that one. I don't know. There's like a... Maybe a, I don't know. Anyway, who wants to build that big a high... Yeah, it's that. It's that one. They have like cranes and shit. It's that. Huh. That's pretty crazy. It says... It said on the article it took... It... Uh, where did this... Uh, it said it took 168 trucks over a week to deliver the sand. Yeah. Why would you ever want to do this? That's insane. Why not? But the thing is, like, it's so detailed. There's 30 artists and shit. But you just, like, climb up there, and you just fucking detail out all this sand mixed with clay or whatever. It's crazy. So I don't think they have... There's a lady in a bath towel that says, Welcome to Blockos. Yeah, that's where the, the city where they made it was at. But so they coated it in glue so it would stay. But it seems just like a waste of sand to me. Like, nobody can get on it. No, nothing. You just gotta sit there and look at it. It's crazy. People I have mean, a lot, people have a lot of time in their hands. I mean, hey, eh, more oh, look, they're standing on it. Cool. Only a hundred and seventy-seven likes. Makes sense because nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, only a hundred and seventy-seven likes on Instagram. Well, guess what, buddy? You're gonna get one more like. Oh, now you gotta log into Instagram. No, nope, oh. already logged in, buddy. One more like from me. Hundred and seventy-eight. Woo! Seven days ago, too. And I got uh, only like 10 comments. Congratulations. Can we visit it? Yes, you can. Question mark. Wow, amazing. Surprisingly enough, you can. It'll be $100 a ticket. You just got to go um, all the way to Denmark. There's got to be a weight limit to walk on that thing or you're just going to fall through the fucking thing. I don't know. Denmark's weird, though, because Denmark had the big fucking penis man cartoon. Remember that? The dude with the fucking migrating penis. Oh, yeah. The candy cane dick. That was Denmark. People actually really enjoyed it. No, they didn't. They canceled it. Because a dude with a fucking, a dude who had a fucking extendable penis with a mind of its own, who fucking tamed a lion and shit, they could not have that a cartoon. Uh, cartoon guy with penis. Good. Yeah. One. Yeah, right there. He has a super long penis that fucking has a mind of its own. It's ridiculous. Didn't we watch the cartoon? Yeah, we watched it. It was a news article a long time ago. Yeah. I don't know when it was. Back in like John England. Dillerman, yeah, it's yeah John, John Dillerman. Dillerman. He looked like fucking a drunk French Waldo. <laughs> I want to play this again. He's bouncing on like tiggers. Look, he's taming a lion. And then he ties it to balloons and gets fucking taken up in the air. An old lady shoots him down. Yeah, he's a fucking so weird animated candy cane dick. <laughs> it's so weird though. Yeah, who would have thought that would have got canceled in fucking Denmark as a cartoon? Crazy. They also had another one that got canceled. Uh, I guess it was like a kid who was like showing being bad on the cartoon, and they thought it that made kids think that they could be bad and get away with shit on this cartoon. So they canceled that one as well, like around the same time as this one. But um, well, yeah. yeah. Of course they can get away with shit. So, that is the episode, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for downloading. We love you so fucking much. Uh, good luck out there. Stay safe out there. Uh, be kind to each other because the world is not so kind to each other right now. It, it, it never has been. Everybody's antisocial. And they got their nose in their fucking phones. Well, let's go talk to somebody, huh? Let's have conversations with people. It's not all about you, goddammit. Um... We love you. Uh, always remember, tell a friend about this show. Go rate and view us on whatever platform you listen to. Send us an email. It doesn't fucking matter. Go follow our shit. Everything is down in the description. Love you guys so much. Wash your hands. Wash your motherfucking ass. Let's get out of here. Thanks for all the downloads recently, everybody. I We appreciate you and love you so much. Couldn't do this without you. Uh, Cheyenne had to step out. She got a phone call, so you will not get a ending word from her. You will not get an ending. Woo! <laughs> yeah. uh, stay safe out there. Uh, have a good week, everybody. We will see you next week for another wonderful episode of your favorite podcast. Like always, go use my promo code T20CodyCU. That's T20CU.
20 C O D Y C U for 20% off all Redcon One products. And the beer of the week is El Chivo Loco, brought to us by the Feed Store Beer Co. of Bloomfield, Indiana. Go get some today. You will not regret it. This is another diamond in the rough gem in a small town. This is a brewery. This is a must. This is a brewery that you must go to. As always, everybody, when life gets hard and life gets you down and your kids just want to watch a cartoon with a man with a weird looking penis, um, you milk that motherfucking pig and you put parental controls on your shit. Bye, bitch. Bye.